Hi everybody, this video tip is about how to interpret confidence intervals, which is something that some people struggle with from time to time. Now my explanation here might be a little bit different to what you see elsewhere on the web and in some textbooks. Now I had to do a wee bit of research on it myself to brush up my own interpretations, but I'm pretty confident that I've got it right. Now what I won't be doing is that I won't be explaining how to actually calculate those confidence intervals, I'm just going to be focusing on the interpretation side of things. So, what is a confidence interval? Suppose we are trying to estimate the value of some quality of interest, for example, the number of hectares dolphins around the South Island of New Zealand. In reality, there is some fixed, true value that is unknown to us. So we go out and collect appropriate data and use that to obtain an estimate of the number of dolphins. Now we could use a point estimator, which provides a single value for the abundance estimate, but we'd have to be extremely lucky to obtain the exact right number. But nevertheless, that might be our best single value estimate of how many dolphins there might be. A second approach is to use an interval estimator, which means instead of trying to specify a single value for abundance, we want to estimate abundance by specifying a range of values that we think are reasonable. A confidence interval is a type of interval estimator. Now any type of estimator has certain properties, and those properties depend upon what assumptions are being made by the methods being used. For example, we might often try to use an unbiased estimator or an estimator that has the smallest variance. When we're using a confidence interval as an interval estimator, then one of those properties that we're looking at is called the confidence level. The confidence level is the theoretical probability that an interval estimate will contain the unknown true value of interest if the assumptions required by that analysis are correct. The confidence level determines the width of the interval estimate with a higher confidence level resulting in a wider interval. Note that the probability relates to the interval as the population parameter is considered fixed. So is the interval that we different with different sets of data sampled from the population. Also note that the probability is in reference to the interval before it has been constructed. We can demonstrate this property by simulation. Here I've simulated data from a population 20 times and each time calculated a point estimate and a 95% confidence interval for the average height of a large group of people, which in reality is 175 centimetres. Note that most of the time the interval includes the true value, but for simulation number 14 it doesn't. That interval is too high. In my opinion, this underlying theory about the properties of confidence intervals is the source of most people's confusion about how they should be interpreting them. The confidence level is just a property of the estimation method being used to calculate a particular type of interval estimate. For any single application of the method, it doesn't make sense to talk about the probability of the interval uh, including the true value anymore. It either does or it doesn't. This is similar to when we're interpreting a point estimate. We may use an estimation method that's unbiased, but the actual value that we calculate is either going to be larger or smaller than the true value, and we have no way of knowing which. We don't expect to get the exact right value every single time. So how do we, or how should we, interpret a confidence interval? The key is keeping in mind that a confidence interval is a type of interval estimator. Therefore, what we calculate from an analysis shouldn't be referred to as just a confidence interval, but as a confidence interval estimate. Now this is really important, so I'll say it again. We should be referring to them as a confidence interval estimate. The percent confidence just relates to what type of interval estimate we have calculated. So here are my tips for how we should be interpreting a confidence interval estimate. First, don't use the word probability, and it's best to avoid similar words like chance or likelihood that people will often use interchangeably with probability. Next, don't refer to whether it contains a true value or not. It either does or it doesn't, and it's impossible for us to know which might really be the case. So therefore, don't overthink it. Simply describe it as an interval estimate for that population parameter of interest. Remember, the percent confidence relates to a theoretical property of the estimation method and describes the type of interval estimate we're using. Now let's finish by returning to the Hector's dolphin example. Produce were part of a team that conducted aerial surveys for these dolphins between 2010 and 2016 and estimated their abundance using double observer distance sampling. We were responsible for much of the overall design in terms of determining how much survey effort was required and analysed all the data. Our final 95% confidence interval estimate was that 
the number of dolphins around the South Island was 12,000 to 18,500 individuals, which turned out to be substantially larger than previous estimates. Now the important thing to note here is that it is the interval itself which is our estimate of how many dolphins there were. So there you have it, I hope you have found that useful. You can visit the news tips and tricks page on our website to get more information about how to interpret confidence intervals or other tips on statistics. Feel free to contact us if you have any questions or explore our website to find out more about what Proteus does. Thanks for your attention.